So we're starting a new chapter on acids and bases. It builds on from the previous chapter on solutions. In this chapter, we will look at solutions that are, can be described as acidic or basic, and we talk and we will also discuss how acid and base will interact with each other. But first, let's define and think about what are some acids and bases that we know in our in our everyday life. Okay, so let's talk about some acids first. Uh, what are some of the acids that you may know? I listed here some of the common acids. Citric acid, acetic acid, phosphoric acid, and hydrochloric acid. Can you see where these acids are found in your everyday materials? Citric acid, that's the acid found in fruits, right? It's like in oranges um, or lemons. What about acetic acid? That's the acid in vinegar, right? Vinegar is acid, acetic acid plus water. Phosphoric acid, that's in your sodas. What about hydrochloric acid? Hydrochloric acid is an acid in your stomach, stomach acid, okay? So when we think about acids, what do these things kind of have in common? Kind of a everyday attribute we can describe them is that they have a little sour taste, right? So acids, turns out, acids tend to have a little sour taste. Let's talk about, before going on to the definition, let's talk about bases now. I listed up here, again, some common bases you may know. Calcium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, and sodium hydroxide. Okay. Do you know where, where you can find these in your everyday stuff? Right? Calcium carbonate is Tums, right, or your antacids. How about sodium bicarbonate? That's baking soda. Sodium hydroxide, that's the main ingredient in Drano uh, called lye, like right? sodium hydroxide. And so what's the common attribute what you may say about bases? Have you tasted a base? Hopefully not. Most people don't eat bases. But bases, if you did uh, ever taste it, is a little bit chalky and um, very bitter. Right? Now let's talk about the definition of the acids and the base. The most simple definition is defined by a scientist named Arrhenius. So the Arrhenius definition for an acid is that it produces a proton when dissolved in water. So our most common example here is hydrochloric acid. So if you think about hydrochloric acid, is hydrogen bonded to a chlorine? If you dissolve this in water, if the hydrogen and the chlorine breaks apart, the hydrogen becomes a positive because it's almost like a cation, where the chlorine is your anion, right? A negative charge. So whenever you produce this in water, again we want to say this producing water is aqueous, this is aqueous. Whenever you produce a proton in water, according to Arrhenius, you have an acid. Okay? Well, before we go on to the definition of base, I want to talk a little bit more about this acid. So we call this a proton because it's basically a hydrogen atom without an electron. What is, an, what is a hydrogen atom without an electron? Think about what is a hydrogen atom? A hydrogen atom has one electron and one proton and zero neutrons, right? So if it doesn't have a neutron and it doesn't have elect electrons now because it gave it away to this chlorine guy, what does it have left? Proton. So that's why we sometimes call uh, hydrogen plus protons. Now it turns out hydrogen plus or protons don't exist in water just as is because it's so reactive that it reacts with even the water. So in a solution of water, the proton is surrounded by the water. Remember the proton is electron deficient? Because of the duet and um, octet rule, it probably wants to have two electrons. Right? right now it has zero electrons. So instead of being by itself, it sees, hey, oxygen, you, you as in from the oxygen from the other molecule of water, hey, you have lone pairs, can I share it with you? So he comes along and decides to share electrons with that oxygen. Now, when we share electrons, how do we represent that? We just draw it as a bond, right? So actually, hydro hydrogen protons don't exist in nature by itself. It exists in a complex, in a molecule like this, where this is positively charged because it brings along with that positive charge with it. But oxygen now is bonded to two, I mean, oxygen now is bonded to three hydrogen uh, atoms with one lone pair. This is called a hydronium ion. It has a special name. Okay, hydronium ion. So again, to reiterate, sometimes you may see chemists write 
the proton is just H plus as the acid, or you may see the H plus written more correctly as oxygen with three hydrogens to it, called hydronium ion, and we may write the formula for that as H3O plus. Alright, so now let's move on to talk about the definition of a base. Again, we're sticking with the Arrhenius definition. The Arrhenius definition for a base, just like in the definition for acid, is that when you dissolve something in water, it produces a proton. That's the definition of acid. The definition of a base, according to Arrhenius, is that whenever that substance is dissolved in water, it produces a hydroxide ion. That's what you call a base. Okay, so for example, if I have sodium hydroxide, it's like uh, most famous example here, sodium hydroxide. What is sodium hydroxide again? It's a what kind of compound? It's an ionic compound, right? Metal, non-metal. This is a cation. This is a polyatomic anion. We did this last uh, last chapter when uh, ionic compound is dissolved in water and if you check the solubility rules, this is soluble in water, right? If it is soluble in water, what happens? It breaks up into its cationic and its anionic components, right? So you got sodium breaking up and it's being surrounded by water plus you got your hydroxide broken up and surrounded by water. All right? Notice then this is produced in water. Anytime hydroxide is produced in water, that's the Arrhenius definition of a base. Now let's talk about naming acids and bases. When it comes to naming acids and bases, they follow two different rules. Let's take a look at acids first. The first thing you notice about the formula of an acid is that the hydrogen, that is the, pro the acidic proton, is written in the front. There are hydrogens within that molecule too, but those, mole those hydrogens aren't acidic, so we uh, try to dif differentiate between the two. So for example, acetic acid is written as H in the front, that is one acidic uh, proton, with the acetate ion uh, uh, left over. So it turns out there are, multi there are many, many kinds of acids. We're going we're gonna to first go with the simple acids. There is one class of acid that's basically a hydrogen bonded to an, a, a monatomic anion. So if, for example, chlorine is a monatomic anion, so if you have hydrogen and monatomic ion, your naming system is to say hydro, and then say the root name of that anion, chlor, add ic to it. So it's hydrochloric acid. Right, so let's give another example. This is a monatomic anion, it's bromo group, right? It's a bromine. So how would you call or how would you name this acid? It has a hydrogen in front, so that's why you know it's an acid. So you would say it's hydrobromic acid, right? So that's the rules for monoatomic. What about polyatomic? It turns out there's different rules when it is in a polyatomic uh, anion. So for example, if it's a polyatomic in phosphoric acid here, your polyatomic is PO4. Let's, let's backtrack a little bit. If I gave you the polyatomic PO4 and I said this is the acid of it, how would you write the rest of the formula? Well, we know that PO4 is charged what? Negative 3, right? So if the PO4 is charged negative 3, the hydrogen is each is positive 1, then it will be 3 hydrogens. So, so that's why the formula for phosphoric acid is H3PO4. Now let's go back to the naming system. If it's a polyatomic ion, and the polyatomic ion ends in the name 8, then all you do is change the last name of 8 into ic and say acid. Okay, so for example, this is phosphate, so we say it's phosphoric, I-C, acid. Okay, so some more example. How about H2SO4? What's the root word of What's the uh, polyatomic here? Sulfate, right? So that becomes sulfuric acid. What about H2SO3? If you look this up, this is a polyatomic, and the polyatomic name is sulfite. Okay, now, 
I just said that if it ends in eight, you change it to ik, right? But when it ends in it, I-T-E, you want to change it into us. Okay, so let's write that. For example, this was sulfuric acid. This now is sulfurous instead of ik acid. So uh, there's a mnemonic device to help you remember this. And the mnemonic device is, I ate something icky at the White House. Okay, so let me write that down. Okay, so again, mnemonic devices don't make sense, but they help you remember certain things. So in this mnemonic device, you see that the word eight and icky is in the same line. So if a polyatomic ends in eight, you want to change it to ick. If an atomic anion ends in ite, you want to change it to us, O-U-S, in, as in the White House. Okay? All right. Naming for bases is nothing new, okay? If you notice in all these bases, it's just a what? What kind of formulas are these? Ionic compounds, right? So, so it turns out all bases uh, that you need to be able to name are ionic compounds. So for example here, uh, we already know how to name something like this, right? Sodium OH, sodium hydroxide. Sodium, and this is a polyatomic of bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate. This is calcium with a polyatomic of a carbonate. This is calcium carbonate. It's quite uh, straightforward there. And of course, there are other acids and other bases, numerous, numerous more. So we don't need to name, know how to name all of them. Uh, these are the simple ones that you are required to know. All right, let's do a checkpoint. Which of the following acids or bases have the correct formula with the correct name? Okay, let's go down this list here. A. HBr. How would you name HBr? It's a monatomic anion, so you just say hydrobromic acid, right? So that's wrong. It's not bromous acid. B. ALOH, parentheses 2. Okay, so this is a base. So how do we name a base? Just how we would name a, an ionic compound, right? So we would call that aluminum hydroxide. Ooh, this is a trick here. The name is right, but is the formula right? What's the charge on aluminum? Aluminum has to be aluminum 3 plus, right? So how would you write this base correctly? It should be aluminum, a parentheses, OH, and outside the parentheses should be a 3. So that's wrong. C, HNO3 nitrous acid. Okay, so this is a acid because we see the hydrogen in front and what is this polyatomic that is attached to NO3 what's the name nitrate so if it ends so if it ends in 8 you have to say ic right so this is nitric acid not nitrous acid lastly d h2co3 all right so h is in front so this must be an acid to name this acid we look at it at the polyatomic, and then the polyatomic is a carbonate. If it's a, if it ends in eight, you have to say, ic, so carbonic acid. So that's right. The answer is D. Let's talk about other definitions of acids and bases. I'm going to stick to base as a, an example here. So as uh, as we mentioned a, a few minutes ago, the Arrhenius definition of a base, for example, is what. If something dissolves in water, produces hydroxide, is a base, right? So let's say you got this, you put it in water, and it dissolves into sodium aqueous and hydroxide minus aqueous. Okay? Since it produces a hydroxide anion, that makes it an Arrhenius base. Well, what about something like this? you get ammonia and you put it into water, what happens? Does it break up into its uh, anionic component? It doesn't, right? Because ammonia is not an anionic compound. So what happens to it? It just gets solvated first. Do you see a hydroxide being produced? 
So we can't call this a a rainy space, but we actually know that this is very similar to a base, and we, indeed we do call it a base. So there must be a different definition to define what a base is. What we can take a look at is what happens when you see ammonium reacting with water. What happens? What is produced? So ammonia plus water turns out to produce NH4 positive and OH minus. There we go. That's the similarity, right? So that's one reason why we still consider this a base, because, in a, because eventually you do have a hydroxide ion there. Now let's take a closer look at this actual chemical reaction to see how we can come up with a new definition for base and acids. Okay. The first thing I want to connect to you to see is, if you, uh, is to look at what is in the reactant and how that reactant has changed. So, in this case, our reactant is ammonia, NH3, and how has it changed? It somehow became NH4+. So it had three hydrogens, and all of a sudden now it has four hydrogens. Why is that? How did that three hydrogens become four hydrogens? Well, it took it from water, right? So we call this a proton. And actually, I should specify that it's, just, it's not just hydrogen, but it actually took on a positive charge. So it, took, uh, so it, it added a proton, not just a hydrogen atom. So it accepted a proton. Okay. In, in our definition now, anything that accepts a proton is called a base. Okay. So that's our first definition. Now let's take a look at water. How did water suddenly become hydroxide? It lost a proton, did it not? If it loses a hydrogen and a positive charge, then it becomes OH with a negative charge. So this is what we call a proton donor. So it donated. Anything that donates a proton is called now an acid. So that's our new definition of acid and base. And this definition is called the lowry bronsted definition. Okay. Some more things I want you to focus on. Let's go back to ammonia and this ion over here. Okay. You notice that ammonia becomes NH4+. So it becomes something that's very similar to it. Because of that, we call, the, we call those a, a pair, and we call it, in particularly, conjugate pairs. Just how in language arts, when you conjugate a verb, like run, become runs, it's the same word, really, but it changes a little bit by adding the S at the end. Same thing here. When you are a ammonia, and you become or NH3, you become NH4, the only thing you've changed really is adding that hydrogen and that positive charge, so you've been conjugated, kind of, so we call that a conjugate pair. Okay, And then, therefore, water and hydroxide are also a conjugate pair. Okay, Now let's, we already defined that this is a base and acid, right? So what do we call these two? So in order to get the, in order to get the name of these uh, uh, two, two products, let's look about what happens when they actually react and go backwards. These two things can react and go backwards, right? So, ammo ammonium ion reacting with hydroxide ion will become ammonia and water. You see, that's called the reverse reaction. Let's take a look at this. NH4 plus becoming NH3. How did that happen in terms of donating or accepting protons? Did it donate proton to become NH3, or did it accept a proton to become NH3? NH4 plus donated proton to become NH3, right? So if you donate a proton, what are you called? Acid. Okay, so we can call this an acid with respect to this guy, of course. Now let's take a look at OH minus. OH minus, did it donate or accept proton to become water? It accepted a proton, right? OH minus add a proton to become water. So if it accepted a proton, you would call this a base. 
Does that make sense? On the reactant side, this is your base and this is your acid. On the product side, if these two reacted, they're, the way they interact with each other is that this is the acid and this is the base. This guy gave hydrogen to this guy. So this guy is the acid proton donor. This guy is the base proton acceptor. Now it might be confusing to say this is acid and this is also an acid, right? So to uh, mitigate that confusion, we need to give this a special name. Since these two are conjugate of each other, they're conjugate pairs, if this is the base, we can just call this the conjugate acid. What do you think we can call this guy? The conjugate base. Right? So whenever there's a transfer of protons in a reaction, we call that an acid-base reaction. And in an acid-base reaction, there's always going to be one base and one acid. Just like in a lending, uh, when you go to the bank and borrow money, there's always going to be a borrower and a lender. One who gives the money and one who takes the money. Same thing here. One gives proton, one takes proton. One base, one acid. One base, one acid. Let's do some more examples of this to practice identifying acid bases, conjugate acids, and conjugate bases. Alright, so the identifier of acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. So how do we do this? Alright, first off, I always like to identify my conjugate pairs. Which is related to one another. Ammonia is related to NH4, right? Ammonia, it gained a proton, so it's a proton acceptor. Right? So if something is a proton acceptor, we call that a base. Very good. And here's the trick. If this is the base, its conjugate is called the conjugate acid. We're going to prove that in a bit, but, but that's a trick to, if you want to do it fast. If your reactant is the base, then its conjugate is called the conjugate acid. Okay, let's now let's take a look at this pair. This guy lost a proton to become this guy. So if you lose a proton, you donated your proton, you are a acid. And uh, you're an acid, right? Again, the trick, the quick trick is if this is your acid, then its conjugate is called the conjugate base. But let's prove it. Is this really the base and this really the acid? Let's take a look at this. When these two things reacted with each other, what happened? This guy accepted a proton. If it accepts a proton from this one, if it accepted a proton, it becomes that guy, right? So if it's something that's an acceptor of proton, we call that a base. If something donates a proton, we call that a an acid, right? Let's do another example now. Okay, HF water becoming F minus and H3O plus. So which one are my conjugate pairs? Right? H and F, HF and F minus. How did HF become F minus? It must have donated its proton. If it donates its proton, this is called acid. Let's do the bottom case, I mean the other case. These two are conjugates of each other. Water become H3O plus. In order for water to become H3O plus, it accepted a proton. If you're a proton acceptor, you call a base. Again, the conjugates, if this is acid, this is called the conjugate base. And if this is the base, you would call this the conjugate acid. So let's do a checkpoint. Identify the acid conjugate base pairs. Alright, so in this problem, you're you are basically uh, asked to identify if I give you an acid, can you give me the conjugate base? Okay. So again, think about this. An acid is what? What's the definition of acid? An acid gives away its proton, right? So if you are a acid, when you become the base, you lose a proton, right? So if this was an acid and it becomes its conjugate base, this should be NH. Two. Does it have a charge? Remember, a proton is positive. So if you lost a P 
P, an, a proton, which is an H plus, not only does the number of H go down, but the charge goes down because you lost a positive thing, so you become negative. So this is not the answer. Okay, how about this one? H3O plus, again, if you are an acid, you lose a proton, so one less hydrogen, and then one less charge. So positive one minus positive one is zero. Oh, that might be the answer. But let's check it anyways. H2SO3, okay, so again, if you're the acid, you lose one proton, so you become HSO3, and this is zero charge, so you minus one because you lose a positive one, so this becomes negative, which is not that, right? So this is also not a good pair. How about this one? This one I don't even have to check. They don't even look the same, so they're not even conjugates of each other. But if I wanted to, how would I write this as a conjugate uh, base? Of these, you lose one proton, so C2, H3, O2, and what's your charge? You lost a proton because it was zero before, now it's negative. 